The Smiths were chosen by Reorks. They lost the Grey Stone, which created Scions from them. The Scions led the Smiths to Ancelon, and our story of dwarves continues. Welcome to another Dragonlance Saga episode. My name is Adam, and today we're going to talk about the Dwarven Kingdoms. This can be seen as part two of last week's Dwarves of Kryn episode. I'd like to take a moment and thank my collaborator patrons, the Heroes of the Lands, and invite you to consider becoming a patron or member of this channel by visiting the links in the description below. You can even pick up Dragonlance gaming materials using my affiliate link. This episode is informed by the Advanced Dungeons & Dragons 2nd Edition Dwarven Kingdoms of Kryn box set, but also from the novels and other game materials. As a way of a primer, the first Dwarven Kingdom on Ancelon was called Calthax. In truth, there would be many of them along the coastline. Calthax stands for Cold Forge. The first of these was formed among the natural caverns and sea caves along the coast of Nordmar. It was seen as a chill prison or fortress, useful only as protection from the tremendous threat of the wandering Greystone. They would delve deep into the natural and living limestone underground to create their new home. This is truly where the dwarven traits as we know them manifest within the race. As they expanded the network of Calthax that would uncover a sealed cavern where water dripped from the rock, falling onto the floor in a deep minor musical key. Upon closer inspection, the wall bore the face of Reorks himself, and the great debate as to why he wept would begin. Was this sign to be content with their new home and find peace, or to strike out and build even greater homes? After the fall of Gargath and the further chaos of the newly released Greystone, the dwarves migrated to a newly discovered home of Thorin, an ancient, abandoned, crude ogre lair by dwarven standards. The deep cave was one feature that was outdone in its significance by the pool of magma at its center. They built a great keep of Thorin at the heights of their kingdom and delved vast caverns beneath the surface. With their endless energy source at the core of their new kingdom, they would invent glass-blowing, mirrors to light the vast underground land, and delve a vast grand gather where they would have formal meetings and bring honored guests. They also uncovered the dragon orbs. The elves hid their aeons before, bringing them to the surface to destroy them in the Lords of Doom, a trio of active volcanoes. They were lost in a great ogre battle. They would trade with human realms and find peace and prosperity. The chieftain and over a thousand followers would migrate to a new home, a Calthax in the west. The Hylar were able to best and convince the Thewar, Dewar, Dergar, and Klar that lived there to join them in a new kingdom called Thorbarden. Thorbarden features a massive lake with a life tree at center. Each dwarven clan has a vast kingdom of their own underneath the mountain. During the Kinslayer Wars, the Thewar wanted to ally with the humans, but hide it from the elves. The Hylar discovered this treachery and, to rectify it, came to the aid of Kith Cannon and ultimately settled the war. The Sylvanisti never forgave the Thewar, though the Hylar and Qualinisti would make peace through the signing of the Sword Sheath Scroll and the building of the fortress Pax Tharkaz. The Ergoth invasion of the Caroli's Mountains would ultimately unify the dwarven clans of Thorbarden. For a thousand years, Thorbarden would be a symbol of peace and prosperity. The Third Dragon War was won in no small part due to the inclusion of Thorbarden's army joining the forces of light. There would be another thousand years of growth and prosperity before the Cataclysm, and the dwarves would found two new colonies. The first was a return to Thorin, or what was now called Thoradin in the Calicus Mountains. There was a belief that superior steel lay within its depths, and many companies went searching for its abandoned halls. After battling many ogres in the Calchists, they discovered their old homeland. The downside was that it was inhabited by their ancient enemy. They didn't want to exterminate the ogres, but rather drive them from their ancestral home, so they set a coordinated attack with defined escape routes, and after hours of pressure from the dwarven armies, the ogres abandoned Thoradin. The dwarves would clear out and reclaim the ancient tunnels and spaces, clearing paths to the now-covered magma pools. 
The dwarves of Thoradin opened exclusive trade with Istar, and they would build roads for the humans to travel the mountains and its passes. The first ogre war would begin in 910 PC, lasting over 40 years. Thoradin could get no assistance from Istar and little aid from Thorbarden, losing many lives and goods in the battles. If it wasn't for the assistance of the Knights of Salamnia, Thoradin might have perished. It ended with the ogres asking for a truce, which lasted for 350 years. In 613 PC, the first High Thane was appointed to Thoradin, which would mark the end of violent strife between the clans under the mountain. The Second Ogre War was not as evenly fought. The dwarves immediately enlisted bodies of Salamnia and resources from Istar, and in a few years decimated the Ogre nation. In 118 PC, when the King Priest of Istar declared the Proclamation of Manifest Virtue and ordered the dwarves to stop their worship of Reorks, Thoradin immediately closed its borders to Istar, turning back anyone attempting to pass the Calchists. Infuriated, and without access to Western Anselon, as the elves had already closed their borders to Istar, they sent legions against the dwarves. Istar's losses were so high, it would be a century before they dared to repeat the expedition. With the coming cataclysm being warned about by the clerics of Reorks, Thoradin closed its borders for goods, smuggling trade and hoarding resources as they had long been unable to subsist on their own. The cataclysm truly ended Thoradin, with six of its seven great settlement cities immediately destroyed and the volcanic eruptions under the mountain, only Zekar would rise from the ashes. The second colony, founded by the prosperity of Thorbarden, was Kaolin. Located 300 miles north of Thorbarden, Kaolin was a Hylar-only colony. The dwarves were granted access to the northern Kerali's mountains by the Knights of Salamnia for their assistance in the Third Dragon War. They utilized the underground streams to create a small city named Garnet Thax and delved deep into the mountain for the area's rich abundance of metals, granite, marble, and gems. Trade was going so well with the Hylar, they invited the Daywar to join them and help mine and delve. For 500 years, it remained a colony paying tribute to Thorbarden, but in 458 PC, Garnet declared its independence. The Cataclysm didn't cause any major damage to the kingdom, but it did force them to close their gates from the world as well, making the last two dwarven kingdoms cut off from each other by the New Sea. Now, returning to Zakar, the damage from the Cataclysm was extensive, but the bulk of the population survived, though they did not thrive. They were cut off from the rest of civilization by the chaotically shifting mountains. The Thiwar survivors suffered from the plague, thought to be the result of mold due to an incredible amount of moisture from flooding. This plague distorted their flesh, and many died. Of the survivors, many would be driven insane. Those who did survive were twisted versions of themselves. They began to pursue evil and dug a tunnel from their home to sanction, running weapons, armor, and supplies for the Dark Queen. The Cataclysm also caused the closing of Thorbarden, shutting out the hill dwarves and human refugees. Fist and Dantilus would magically erect Zaman Keep and take command of the forces besieging Thorbarden. When his army was near defeat, he called down a series of potent spells that not only destroyed their enemy's army, but his own forces. Zaman was battered into a ruin known as Skullcap today. The dwarven gates would remain closed until the heroes of the lance entered Thorbarden and Flint Fireforge retrieved the Hammer of Keras. And that has caught us up with the known dwarven kingdoms of Kryn. Do you have a favorite kingdom? Do you think the dwarves made the right choice to close their gates after the Cataclysm? Leave a comment below. I'd like to once again invite you to consider becoming a patron or a member of this channel, and you can pick up Dragonlance Gaming materials using my affiliate link, all of which are in the description below. This channel is all about celebrating the wonderful world of the Dragonlance Saga, and I hope you'll join me in the celebration. Thank you for watching. This has been Adam with Dragonlance Saga, and until next time, remember, people want to believe in something, even if deep inside they know it is false.